Hi, here we are at the beautiful Manhattan wastewater treatment plant uh, as the sunrise comes up over it. We are in Manhattan, Kansas, and as in most places, the sewage plant is at the lowest point, so gravity can feed all the sewage down into it. There's some exceptions to the east of here. Uh, there's parts of the town that have been added on that are about the same level or even lower elevation, and then the sewage has to be pumped up. In any case, the sewage comes in to the building that you can see the furthest back in this image, and it comes in pretty far down, and the first step is there's a big grate that removes all the largest objects, big pieces of plastic and stuff like that, and also um, floating blobs of, of grease and hair and stuff like that. They, get, they just get pulled out and thrown in the, in the dump. Um, the next step to that, this process is to uh, pump the water up and the, there are some buildings just to the right behind this that are used to pump the water up so that it can flow by gravity through the remainder of the plant. The solids and the, and the liquids are separated uh, and the solids go into a aerobic digester that is pretty thick sludgy stuff and the liquids move on through the process. The other two things that you can see here in this are two relatively large tanks and these are for if the sewage treatment plant needs to shut down and have excess capacity hold um, untreated sewage before it goes in. And then there's also a, a large generator in case they lose power so they can keep going. Here we see the sludge digesters uh, and they push the sludge in here and it's a really thick slurry and then they force uh, air through it and this causes mostly organic carbon to oxidize. As it gets oxidized off, then they pipe it across the river to some cropland, and they apply it on the on the uh, on the on the crops over there. We have to regularly test for things like heavy metals, so they don't really contaminate the land or put any really toxic things in there. In addition to this image, you can see the first step building uh, and some of the some of the early tanks. The first step of the process is to push it through a anaerobic stage where they encourage denitrification. The denitrification then takes some of the nitrogen out from, um, it converts it to nitrate um, ion and then the nitrate uh, ion is combined with organic carbon under anaerobic conditions and goes off as nitrogen gas into the atmosphere. In addition, uh, the lab is over here and they can t test for things like biochemical oxygen demand um, and coliform, and they also collect samples and send them out for regular analyses of other, other potential contaminating items. <laughs> Here we can see some of the activated sludge ponds. So right after the denitrification process, the sewage moves itself, is, is, uh, flows into these activated uh, sludge ponds. The way this works is that they percolate oxygen through these, these um, units, and they then they have a settling stage that's the next stage where they settle out the solids and the bacteria. But what they take some of that stuff that settles out and they feed it back into the activated sludge area. This sort of seeds the microbial community and, and keeps it oxidizing the sewage, uh, the organic material, and out competing the pathogenic bacteria. And it's a whole complex mixture of bacteria and protozoa that, that are conditioning the sewage. So the whole thing is a balance of the microbes and they have to keep them as active as possible. Um, if they get a toxin moving through the plant, then they've got a problem and they've got to seed more back in. Um, if it's cold, uh, maybe they have to seed more back in. If it's really active, maybe they, they seed a little bit less back in. After the sewage is oxidized to the point where most of all biochemical oxygen demand is gone and the, and the bacterial levels are down considerably, they move them into the settling ponds and these are the ones that are right in front of us, not, not the concrete ones behind that you can see. The settling ponds then, the solids move out. Um, the solids are moved from there into either the activated sludge over here or back into the, um, I'm sorry, into the, uh, the solids treatment over here or back into the activated sludge. The liquid comes off the top. This is a mostly treated sewage. It flows into this building where there's a large uh, bank of ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet lights uh, sanitize it the, the very last step before it goes out. They've gone over to ultraviolet from um, chlorine treatment 
And the chlorine treatment causes chlorinated hydrocarbon formation with the organic carbon, and so it really puts out some carcinogens, and they've, most sewage treatment plants have, have moved away from that final step of getting the coliform and the other pathogen bacteria out. From there, the water flows into the Kansas River, and the reason for that is to uh, allow Lawrence to have water to drink. Here's a view of the plant from the opposite side. You can see the incoming buildings on the far left-hand side. Uh, the, ta the tallest building off in the distance that you can see is the giant pumps they use to bring the water up. Uh, there's the square tanks over here in the far back that are the activated sludge treatment. Uh, and then this building here that has these big vents on it is what is taking the air and uh, air and pushing it through. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to push so much air through there, but that's what it takes to keep it aerobic with all that organic carbon and bacterial activity in there and, and drive the um, organic carbon into CO2 and putting it off. Because this is an oxidizing process, the nitrogen that comes out is nitrate. Uh, at some point, they may have to treat for phosphorus in, in addition depending upon if nutrient criteria move into, into effect and, and, and become enforced. There are several options for this if they do this. They could either do a chemical treatment uh, and precipitate it out and then, and, then, and then haul it away. There also happens to be room over here on the other side where this cropland is. They could put in a wetland treatment system, but this is, might all be in the future. As it stands, this wastewater treatment is, plant is in pretty good shape. Uh, they did a major construction upgrade and we can see there's a lot of um, uh, treatment tanks and settling tanks that are not necessarily needed or in use at this point. So they're, so they're not act, acting uh, near capacity. This is important because uh, when we have rainstorms, the septic systems and the uh, sewer, the septic sewer systems and the drain stormwater systems are supposed to be completely separate, but they're not. And the septic systems uh, it, we get stormwater leaking into the septic system, so we get a really big influx of water, and they have to deal with that in this plant. And so if you have really large influxes of water, you can you can shove it off into those extra tanks that I showed you before to treat it, or you can open up and act, start activating more sewage. Also, this particular uh, municipality has a really wide range of, of um, levels of population because it's a university town. So during the summer or during Christmas holidays, the population is really low and the, and the flow of, of sewage is, is quite low, so they don't have to treat very much. Uh, but when classes are in full swing and you know weekends like when we have football games and the entire town is, is full of 50,000 more people in addition, uh, then there's a quite a bit more sewage that's generated and they have to up their ability to treat that sewage that's coming through faster. The other thing that is really important here uh, from the point of view of, of private uh, citizens is not dumping things into the sewage like acid or, or toxins. And so they have to regulate whether like, uh, I don't know, dry cleaners put their products down, their waste products down the, down the drain. And those are all things that can cause problems uh, with, with the system. But all things considered, I, you, can't, you can't tell uh, because you're not here but uh, the system's quite efficient and while some sewage treatment plants smell pretty horrible i just can't even I don't, I, the wind's the right direction i can't get any odor at all but even if i'm downwind uh, it's not very strong so the system is operating quite well and uh, with these upgrades it seems to be doing really a good job of cleaning the sewage in this particular instance